Hey everyone, this is Mike from Comic Book Trove, back today with another book review, and today I'm going to be taking a look at one of DC's kind of all-time classic events, really. I'm taking a look at the Crisis on Infinite Earths event, specifically collected in this 35th anniversary deluxe edition that came out a couple of years ago now. So um, what I'm going to do is talk about this event in a bit of detail. It's really one of those stories that I think is right up there in terms of its significance with some of the most important story arcs of all time, certainly within DC Comics history. And its significance is hard to deny, and overall it's really one of the most famous comic book events of all time. But with all that said, is it actually a good story? Does it hold up as an enjoyable read today? And is it something I recommend that you check out? So in order to answer some of those questions, hopefully, uh, I'm going to take a look through the book in more detail and showcase it as I share some thoughts. And uh, we'll just dive in and take a bit of a look at it now, so stick around. So here we are with the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths 35th Anniversary Deluxe Edition now. Uh, this is an event, a story which uh, I suppose to a great many people doesn't need a huge amount of an introduction really. I feel it's one of those where even if you've never actually read it, it's probably one that you've at least heard of and have a general idea of what goes on in this story. In terms of the specifics though, it is quite a bit more complicated than you might think. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we take a look through the book here. But first of all, let's just look at this particular edition here, this deluxe edition. Show that off a little bit, just to give a good idea of what that looks like. Like I say, I know this did come out a couple of years ago now, but um, I believe it's still available. Uh, if we take a look here then, so we've got the classic cover here by Alex Ross. And this is one that's been used on other editions as well, because this is a book which is pretty much always in print in one format or another. I think at the very least is pretty much always a trade paperback edition available of this story. So it shouldn't be too hard to find some way to read it if you're interested in checking it out and never have done. Um, but yeah, a very kind of busy cover here, a lot of characters, a lot of stuff going on. And that is certainly something we're going to see a huge amount of as we look through the book. The artwork in here is extremely busy. That's the best word for it. Um, let's take a look on the back. So we got your blurb here that just explains a little bit about what this is about. So feel free to have a look at that. But yeah, Crisis and Infinite Earths then. So this particular book, this particular edition, which contains the full 12 issue series and then a, a kind of edition in the back called the History of the DC Universe, I believe. Got this wraparound cover on the hardcover itself, which is quite nice. Take a look at that. Um, George Perez artwork, of course, who is the, uh, the penciler in this book. The writer being Marv Wolfman, the two of them uh, very notable for the uh, collaboration that they had had and worked on New Teen Titans together in the years prior to this story coming out. And because of their success on that title, when DC came to doing this project, which aimed to streamline their entire continuity, they thought that the pair of Wolfman and Perez were uh, a good fit to tell this story. Um, in the uh, opening of the book, then, we do get this introduction, which... Uh, Opens things nicely by Marv Wolfman. It's not a new one written for this book. It's from 1998, but nevertheless, it's uh, still applicable, of course. And then we jump in. So the gist of this story, spoiler warning, by the way, I should say, although having said that, I myself, I'm not going to claim to remember every single thing that happens in this book because it's been a while since I read it. And as I've touched upon, a lot of the specifics in here are really quite complicated and uh, the story tends to move at a mile a minute at some points in here. It really does. A lot of characters, a lot of things going on. It is a little difficult to keep track of it all from what I remember when I uh, last read through it. Um, but here we go then. So one thing I want to say, and which I will probably mention a few times, to be honest, as we look through some of the pages in here and some of the specific panels, is that I think George Perez was the perfect artist to work on this story. One of the things that he was so well known for and recognised for during his career was his ability to pack a lot of things onto a particular page or panel to get a lot of characters on the uh, on the page at once and make them all look great. Something that I suppose a lot of artists struggle with, understandably so. It was something he really always excelled at. And that is a, a talent and a skill that certainly was needed to tell this story in the way it was told. Uh, Marv Wolfman's writing, I find it a little bit dry, I have to say. And uh, although this isn't really the topic of this video, I will just make a general side point and say that for that reason, I have always kind of struggled to get into the new T Titans work between uh, that was, you know, brought about by Perez and Wolfman. Could never really get into that. Never really fully enjoyed Marv Wolfman's writing on that series. And it's a little bit similar here. It's not exactly bad writing. 
it's just not for me it's not exciting writing you know I, I never really felt completely invested in this story now to be fair a large part of what makes this story important i suppose is having some knowledge or familiarity with the pre-crisis and infinite earth's dc continuity um, broadly speaking to simplify it as much as i can this story was really a turning point in dc's history and what this kind of is, is the story that bridges the gap between everything that came before it, from Action Comics number one in 1938, with the first appearance of Superman, all the way up to this story in the mid-80s, 1985, 86. Um, and uh, yeah, after this story, the result of this story was that you get a whole new DC continuity, effectively the first major reboot in DC Comics history, and uh, definitely not the last though. Um, but that's another topic. Uh, so this story had a huge task, a massive monumental task that I really don't envy Wolfman and Perez for having had to kind of put together and pull this off to effectively take decades of continuity, streamline it, strip a lot of things out and leave the DC universe in a new kind of more simplified place as of the end of this story. That was a huge task to do and it involves a lot of characters and <laughs> many of whom I barely knew if I knew them at all, I've got to say. And that is, you know, personally on me because I'm not super familiar with pre-Crisis and Infinite Earths DC history. To be honest, if it's not one of the major DC characters like Batman, Superman, um, I don't know a lot about it if it happened before this event. Because for me, I've always found it much easier to jump onto DC Comics as a result of of what this book did actually accomplish in fairness to it. So in, in streamlining DC continuity, this book was certainly a necessary story. But this story itself is not uh, super enjoyable for me. It, um, it looks beautiful at times. As I say, you know, the George Perez artwork is hard to fault. There are some really amazing examples of fantastic artwork by him that he produced on this book. I mean, Perez really was one of the all time great comic book artists in my opinion. But even as we just look through this story, you know, it's it's such a busy book, you know, there's almost not a single page that isn't overflowing with things happening. It's quite, I always found it quite a visually confusing book, you know, just because of the sheer amount of stuff that is happening on every single page. I would love to hear if other people feel that same way about it, because I remember the first encounter I ever had with this story, not the first time I read it, but the first time I ever came across it in any in any way um, was in a comic book shop many years ago now um, and I saw a trade paperback of it when I was looking through the collected editions this is this could be 15 years ago or more and um, I looked through a yeah I said a trade paperback collection I just flicked through it saw some of these pages and uh, I just felt immediately kind of overwhelmed I just thought wow that just looks like the most complicated thing you know it just it, and it kind of is, you know, to this day. I mean, I didn't read it until years after that when I finally picked it up and gave it a proper read. Um, and then, you know, I ended up buying this deluxe edition as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, having read it two or three times over the years, um, it's certainly not one that makes it onto my list of favourite ever stories. It's certainly one of the most important stories, as I already mentioned in my introduction. For that reason alone, I do recommend it if you haven't read it before that you give it a go so you can at least kind of say that you've read it given how important it you know it truly was um but uh, there are certainly some significant moments and this issue here issue 7 with a very iconic cover superman holding the body of his cousin Kara Zarel aka Supergirl um this is you know this is a very um prominent moment in the story a very heartbreaking moment where Supergirl does in fact die, and she did remain dead in the continuity for quite some time after this. She didn't remain dead forever, she did come back eventually um, in the early 2000s, but uh, for quite a while, even though there was a Supergirl in DC Comics, it wasn't this Supergirl. Kara Zarel, the original Supergirl, did in fact die in this story, along with uh, probably the most other notable example of a key character death in here being Barry Allen, the Flash. Um, and both those character deaths are, you know, quite touching, quite tragic. They are the big emotional punches of the story, I would say. Um, it is a story with monumentally massive stakes overall, because the entire point of this story is that the multiverse, 
every version of Earth and the universe is collapsing in on itself. Worlds are vanishing in the blinks of an eye. Uh, so the whole point is, you know, all these heroes have come together to try and save well, as much as they can, really, and to stop this kind of cataclysmic event. Um, the main villain is the Anti-Monitor. Probably one of, if not DC's biggest cosmic villain, you know, on a scale of... Um, I don't even know, some of the huge cosmic characters in Marvel's continuity are like Eternity and stuff like that. The Anti-Monitor's sort of up there on that sort of scale. Um, we spoke a little bit about the Flash's demise, which we see on some of the panels here. It's a very kind of um, uh, difficult few panels to read in terms of literally watching the Flash run himself to death in a final act of sacrifice to try and delay the Anti-Monitor's plans. And we see these panels here with him literally slowly disintegrating. Um, and again, you know, Barry Allen, that version of the Flash, he was one that was gone for quite a long time, probably about 20 years after this. You know, until he came back again, I think, in the 2000s. Um, or maybe more like 2010, something like that. Anyway, he did eventually come back, but again, was gone for quite a while. So, you know, there were some real consequences to this story um, in many ways, really. So you've got to give it that. It certainly had an impact and to this day has a legacy that which it has left behind within the, uh, the DC universe. Because, of course, this was the first but far from the last of DC's big crises events you know they've had uh, infinite crisis final crisis and different types of crises with other names you know and um you know this is a story that does still get referenced sometimes so definitely an important one you know i can't really uh deny that i never made an attempt to deny that but i just think that the actual the full story and trying to read the entire thing is just quite daunting you know as I say, if I mean, if you love this story, then absolutely good on you. And I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts either way, whether you like it, love it, maybe just kind of indifferent towards it. Um, but again, it's, it's me being a little bit repetitive here, but it's just how hectic the story is. It just doesn't seem very streamlined. Um, and to be fair, you know, I'm not sure how you maybe could simplify it much beyond beyond what it is, given, as I say, the stakes of the story and the huge task it had to accomplish from an editorial perspective. Um, but it does the job, it did the job in its its own way, no doubt. Um, and then we can move into some of the extras in the back here, some script pages, some character sketches by George Perez. Um, pretty cool stuff. You know, I mean, the, like I say, the Perez artwork is the, the big draw of the book, even if the story maybe falls flat for me a little bit in terms of, I just don't find it hugely accessible. Um, but there's not really a bad example of artwork throughout the book and throughout the series slash event um, from George Perez. You know, it's all great stuff. This is the history of the DC Universe kind of graphic novel, um, which is a kind of a combination of prose and artwork. Again, by I believe still by Wolfman and Perez, I believe. Um, I haven't actually read this one. I mean, I read. I think I read bits of it, but not the whole thing. Um, but yeah, quite interesting to have a read through. It's just a, it's a history of the DC universe, basically. Um, giving you all kinds of bits of information. And I think the key part of it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong about this, because I might be. Um, but I think the whole point of it is this is telling the new revised history of the DC universe as it now is, following on from the end of Crisis and Infinite Earths, which of course changed a lot of things in the reality of this universe. Um, so this is supposed to be going, it's kind of saying, all right, this is how things are now, and therefore this is the new revised history of the new state of things, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, it is a you know cool thing to include in here, no doubt. And overall, a good collection, but one that I have a bit of mixed feelings on, you know, like historically it's undeniably very important so I have to recommend it in that way, but I have to give it a bit of a wary recommendation. It doesn't get the kind of two thumbs up, definitely go ahead and read it right now kind of recommendation. Um, because if you're anything like me, then although you'll recognize its importance, you may struggle to actually enjoy the story itself, which is a shame. But uh, as I say, if you disagree with me on that, or if you agree with me or whatever the case may be, 
do let me know. But uh, other than that, thank you as always for watching this all the way through. I appreciate that if you've stuck with me all this way. Appreciate it as always, and I'll be back again soon to discuss something else.